Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cuz I Said So, Barstool's only mother daughter podcast. And today I have a special guest because Alex is recording Barstool vs. America. Anyway, my special guest is my husband, Joe, my Hello. one and only, my everything husband. <laughs> So, so Joe, you had a you had a little trouble getting in last night. You got in kind of late. So, are you ready to roll? I'm ready to roll. Been been prepared for the episode today? Not prepared, but <laughs> we're going we're going to drill you on the episode today. I'm all, all your I'm kids and all your friends have sent in questions. Very good. Mm -hmm. I'm always ready. Okay, Joe, we've got two holidays coming up. What are they? This week while you're here. Cinco de Mayo uh -huh. and your day. And my day. That's Mother's right. Day. There's one thing I've always wondered. What we need need to clarify also. You're not my mother. I, I don't know why you do that. That's I was going to say, the one thing I hate the most is that you say, I'm not your mother, so you don't have to get me a gift, that my kids have to get me a gift. Exactly. But I birthed your children, so I think that you should give me a gift. I gave you two gifts. <laughs> I birthed two <laughs> gifts. I think that's how that goes. Oh, yes, my God. You're a legend. That's right. <laughs> and legends get gifts. They get okay. gifts all the time. Okay. Husbands, get your wife's gifts. I always got her a gift. No, no, you didn't. Just when in the last get... few years. Oh, so they're adults. It doesn't count anymore? You're constantly getting gifts. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're, right, you're, you're right, the you're gift right. that keeps giving. <laughs> That's nice, Joe. Okay, so speaking of the other holiday, which is Cinco de Mayo, that makes me think of mamitas. Me too. Do you like mamitas on the golf course? Yes. Yes, they're very good. Grapefruit. Yes. So mamitas is our sponsor, and the only way to celebrate Cinco de Mayo is with mamitas tequila hard seltzer. It's made with fresh tequila and natural flavors. And my favorite one is Paloma. My favorite is grapefruit. And it's only 95 calories. Yeah, that's the best part. And less than two grams of sugar. Less than one and a half grams of sugar. Mamitas is looking to gift a lucky listener a merch box for Cinco de Mayo. So go to their Instagram page, tag a friend, and comment what you'll be drinking this Cinco de Mayo for a chance to win. Okay, so Joe, you got in late last night. You that's always, you always. It was two hours delayed. Yeah, but that's what happens when you don't take the direct flight. That's yeah. why I like the direct flight. It's just so darn early. I agree, but. Yeah. I'm. The father and the mother of the house in Oklahoma City, so I have things <laughs> to get ready. You had to, you, and you don't like to leave the dogs that early. It's a little stressful, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so now the girl that takes care of the dogs, that helps us with the dogs, actually takes Joe to the airport, which makes life very easy. So the dogs and Jennifer bring Joe to the airport, and everybody's happy. Yes, and, and she picks me up. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. With the dogs. And the dogs love her, and she loves the dogs. Yeah. The dogs probably won't recognize me the next time I'm home. So do you like it when you're in New York City? Did you miss me a lot? Yes. Huh? Yes. Is that it? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I know. I always miss you. I know you do. You've been busy, though. You've been playing a lot of golf. I have the last three weeks. Yeah. Yes. Worked out well. Yes. And got to go to Turkey, which was awesome. Uh-huh. Which you wanted me to go more than I did. At first, and then I got a little paranoid and didn't want you to go, and then, then it all worked out. Exactly. Yeah. Tur Turkey gets a bad rap. It's it's a great country. It's beautiful. Very beautiful. People are nice. Awesome. Felt completely safe. Totally. Yeah. And the markets are incredible. Uh, the food is fantastic. <laughs> and you got to ride on the Autobahn in the snowstorm going 100? <laughs> 135 miles an hour. Yeah. With snow? With snow. Joe texted me and he was like, my ass is so tight from riding in the car. <laughs> we're going right past trucks that are going about 60 miles an hour, and we're doing 135. <laughs> and I'm like, you got to be shitting me. All my life has been about safety in the trucking <laughs> business, and I'm going to die in a car in the back seat. <laughs> Not even driving it. Yeah, didn't even... Uh, Okay, so what do you think about me being here? Everybody wants to know this question. Like, what do you think about me having an apartment here and working here? Well, it's a big curveball in the fourth quarter of life, but I love it. <laughs> I love it for you. You've always liked New York City, and you've liked being uh, busy and spunky and on the go all the time, and you're with your daughter. Yeah, you can't be so that. So if you can keep up with her. <laughs> on the roller coaster? Yes. So Barstool's has been, I think, Barstool. <laughs> I 
Oh my God, bar stool. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Uh huh. It's been um, exciting for you. Yeah. And, and you've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. Yeah. And I think when you look back, I mean, it's an adventure. It's a great adventure. I think what you and Alex are doing in the beginning, I had no idea. I don't think you had any idea. This is what it was going to be like. No, didn't have a clue. But I'm really impressed because it's kind of you and Alex are telling a story that's that is involved in your lives and trying to help people be, and make better lives for people. I mean, you're you're an offshoot of the Barstool brand. Yeah, we don't really fit the mold. No, but it's a special what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, if people will listen and watch, they'll learn a lot. We get to have a lot of fun, laugh with you all. There's a lot of people that aren't honest and open, and you two have been open and honest, and I have no doubt you're teaching a lot of a lot of people. So much so that jo- Joe told me that he and Michael have a hard time watching it sometimes because they don't like to hear some of the things I say. Well, for not, I don't care what you say. <laughs> I know you. It's my daughter. It's like, oh no. <laughs> And that's hard to hear? Like yes. when she talks about sex stuff or what? Yeah, a little bit. I'm getting used to it. Michael, I talked to him a couple of days ago, and that's he's like, son. Dad, it's hard to listen to mom and my sister. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, sometimes that's hard to listen to. I don't I don't like to listen to it. It gets embarrassing, I, but I like it when I can make Alex's face turn red as opposed to my face turning red. Speaking of that, I have a story I'd like to tell you all. Okay, what is it? Hello. Hello. Well, looky there. Joe has on this jersey that's white with red letters, red numbers that say 88. What's this about? John Marshall on the back. Oh, okay. I can see it. John Marshall. That's where I went to high school, and this is my senior football jersey. Wow. From 1979. And you fit in it well. I think it, well, I think it shrunk. <laughs> Well, you can still put it on, and I don't think a lot of people can say that they can put on their high school jersey. True. Maybe. No, a lot can. I bet not, but that's okay. You look great in it. Okay. So you put that on for a reason. We're going to talk about that's the first time you've had it on in 42 years. Way to go, man. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that you still have it is impressive. Yes. Well, I I had this, and when I was four years old, I was in a bowling league, and I have that shirt too. Did you go to the bowling league by yourself at four years old? No, I went with my two sisters and brother. You just went out the door with them? No, we half the time we'd walk. We only lived a half a mile from a bowling alley. You would walk, and your mom would just say, like, go with the other ones. No, there's four of us. <laughs> it's a good thing they looked after you and didn't forget that you were with them. It was a good them. neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Mom would take us a lot. It was once a week. Yeah. No, your mom was a great mom. Okay. So you have a story to tell with this jersey on? Your daughter, my daughter, has another show, mm-hmm. Mean Girls. Yes. And it made me think about school and just all this would be wrapped up. And everybody wants to hear a story. Okay. I want to hear. I, I do and I do a lot of storytelling when you I do. talk about <laughs> things I've been through and how it r- should relate and try and make people feel be- better about what they're getting to go through. It always helps. You're really good at that. Hear somebody say, I've d- here's what I've done. This is what I felt like. Yeah. So graduation night, senior year, we graduate, <coughs> walk the plank, the aisle, and get our diploma. You walk and, the plank to get not, your not diploma? The plank, but you go up and around, <laughs> yeah. and get your diploma from the principal who just gave me three licks like in the month of January, my senior year, <laughs> who I was still mad about. I couldn't believe he did that. But anyway, um, so after graduation, we go to a field, and you know the field, uh-huh. the bump, the racetrack. Flat tracks. Flat track. And it's probably about 11 o'clock, and this girl comes up that I've gone to school with now for like eight years and says, hey, I would like to have sex with you tonight. <laughs> huh. So me being the gentleman I am. <laughs> you accommodated her? <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> I can't see why not. So we do that. Fast forward. I've only seen her a couple of times since um, she moved. No? No, don't have to say where she moved. I don't know. Okay, yeah. don't. <laughs> anyway, uh, at our, a couple of years ago at our 40th reunion, I don't know why, but out of nowhere, right when I'm getting ready to leave, I think, 
I'm going to ask her, and I don't know why I'm going to ask her, but was I, if you think about me today, am I a, was I a dickhead? Was I an asshole? Or was I a good person, good guy? You know you were a good person, but did you come off as an asshole? Were you kind of selfish when you were in high school? A lot of people probably want to know, what, yeah. I, what did people think of me when I was in high school? Right. Yeah. And that's what I was, I was wondering. Uh-huh. So I went up and asked her. And What was her reply? It was the meanest thing ever. <laughs> ever. What'd you say? I'm still pissed off. Uh-huh. She said? She said, why don't we wait another 40 years before I answer that? And I, I don't know why that would make you mad. Oh, my God. It I took think... 40 years to get there, so I'm going to be dead. I'd rather have called me a dickhead. I don't think At least I knew. Forty years. Okay. Uh, also, I think that, that, that she was saying that maybe you were an asshole. Well, if I, wanna... But if I was, then she wouldn't have asked me that night to do what we did. Mm, but I don't, I don't know. know why I wanted to ask that at our 40 year <laughs> your reunion. I don't know why you wanted to ask that either, because you have a lot of good friends who would probably tell you <laughs> that, that very same question, right? I'm not asking them. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know what they may say. Well, they may not ever tell you the truth. I was truth. a good person. I now, know you were a good person. didn't mean I did, I mean, I didn't mean, I didn't do harm to anybody or anything. Well, so you could ask me what I thought about you in high school, but I didn't actually go to your high school, but I did know you in high school, because the first time we went out, I was like, Almost 16, right. 15. Right. Yeah. But then we dated off and on. So I was so smitten with you, I wouldn't say you were an asshole. But I would say that you kind of did things your way. I did. Yeah. Yes. But all guys go out with m more than one girl. <laughs> no, they don't. Nor, I mean. I don't think you can say that. Uh, I think so. You Especially do? in the 70s. That was a much freer, more liberal time. Than today. Oh, I think you're more so than wrong the last on that. 10 years. No, I think it's a lot more liberal. Oh, we're now. coming out of the hippie period. We're coming out of the streakers. No, you're in the middle of people don't even date. They just hook up. I think it's a lot different now. No, I think people sleep around and. Am I wrong by saying that? Right. Now it's like there. Oh, it's, now it's a huge commitment, not phobia, but there's a lot of lack of commitment. But I always had a high. Criteria. Oh, you did. I did. No. <laughs> if, Thank you. If I was with somebody, it's because I liked them. I thought they were pretty. I thought they uh, were attractive. Mm -hmm. They had good qualities about them. I'm not one of those guys. If there's a hole in the wall, I'm gonna go stick something in. Okay, it. don't say not that. Happening. Oh my God, you, <laughs> we need to cut that part. Oh, shit. That's the truth. There are guys who are that way. Okay, well, well, I think that what you're saying is gonna get you in a world of hurt, so you should maybe stop now. Okay. <laughs> I need to apologize if I offend anybody. I'm sorry. Because that was humor from your day, but nowadays it may be different. So, so we're going to talk about that at the end of the show. There was an interview with Bill Murray that I yeah. thought was really good. So we, yeah. we need to move past this. So you obviously really enjoyed your high school years and, and your parents were involved? No, my parents were not involved. I think that was more normal back then also. Do you? Back when we were younger, I don't think our parents were near as involved as they are now. No, some parents were, but mine absolutely were not. And But I am the youngest of four. Yeah, so. that's true. Well, so I was just, so you, you really wanted our kids to be involved in everything and they were thankful that you did do that. Yes. So tell, so why do you think it's so impor important to be involved even from elementary all the way through high school? Informing, informing who they, informing who they became as adults. Because that's where you lay the ground floor work mm -hmm. and that's how you get used to people, you um, get used to interacting with people, working with people, working with teachers that are your superiors and learning. And as even in elementary school, people develop leadership skills. Mm -hmm. And from there, they just grow. And build on but, them. Yeah, build on them. But you have to have involvement as parents to watch over your kids. Now, I'm not saying be a, a helicopter parent. That That's no good. I totally disagree with that, but always go to all the PTA meetings, to the parent teachers conferences, listen to what the teachers say about your kids. You're going to get some bad comments and you're going to get some teachers that are just negative. Yeah. So you have to be able to understand who's 
giving you good advice, who's telling you the truth about your child and who's not. But, but the only way you would know that is if you were a really kid. involved in your kids' lives. That's right. Yeah. And their school. So when I went to John Marshall in 78, 79, yeah, I would go to the dances, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't stay till the end. It was more about showing up, showing up and then go party. Being cool and leaving. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. It is stay till the end, enjoy it, be with your friends, be with your classmates, and enjoy everything. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity that you get. You should you should teach your kids, I think, that first through twelfth, it's their job. They need to learn this is required. This is setting you up yeah. for life skills. And this is how you get involved with people that maybe you wouldn't choose as your friends, but you're going to learn a lot from them by being in this group or by going to this dance. Yes. And they both our kids did have a, a lot of friends across the board, not just one group. They Very had a much lot of so. Friends. But we also made them do a sport. They, had, they didn't have to do a sport in high school. That was their choosing. But they had to be in a club. Yeah. Or be an officer um, of the grade. They had to participate, and actually, they started participating more than I ever dreamed they would. Because do you think that's from being involved when they were younger? Yes. Yeah. And us, so they felt comfortable and us reaching encouraging out. them to do it. Yeah. Well, that, that you're not a nerd if you're in um, Stuco or the French Club or Michael yeah. did the Latin Club. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now Alex did Stuco. Okay. So, so you think when you do that, all that prepares them for college. So then when they, when they leave the nest, they're prepared to deal with everything and be involved as a citizen. Yes. And it prepares them. It, it gives them the ground floor to go out on their own because it's an eye opener when they graduate high school and then they go to college. And then and another yeah, one when they graduate you, you college. You still have, some say, but really when they go to college, they're on their own. They're making their own, own choices. Yeah, they are making their own choices, that's for sure. Um, okay, so you have a boy and a girl, and the difference between raising a boy and a girl to you is what? Anything? I mean, do you think it was, did you raise your kids differently, or do you think raising them exactly the same as what you would do if you had a boy and a girl? Well, there, it's definitely different. I always told them they're equal, uh -huh. and we always. You always said before we had kids, you will not raise your kids differently because your dad kind of did you guys. You had two sisters and one brother. Right. That they would raise them differently. I came from three girls, so I have no idea what it's like to have a brother. We were never going to show favoritism, never going to love one more than the other. Well, that that's kind of a given. No, it's not. Really? A lot of, a lot of parents have a little favoritism. Ooh. You don't want to do that. That actually, I know that for a fact that I read that that makes both kids feel bad. The one that you show the favoritism to and the one that doesn't get it. Cause the and, one you gotta you to and you got to tell, and you have to tell them. Yeah. And it'll be unconditional love. Yes. And that's something that is. But did you do anything differently with like, you used to say you were going to raise them exactly the same, but I'm pretty sure Alex had you wrapped around her pinky and got a lot of stuff that Michael would never have even asked for. Michael got a lot. He did, but he never asked for a lot of stuff because no, he'd be Alex, like, I'm not going to. My Alex, Alex would be like, oh, hell yeah, I'm going to try. Alex, yeah. Alex Alex had a way about trying to get stuff. With where, you. She could always do it with you. Okay. Yeah. And Michael usually got more from you. <laughs> you think? But there is there there's there is a big difference in the two. Um, well, there... Like, M Michael... Um, a boy, Michael, he taught me, like, the definition. Okay, you taught me love and commitment. Uh -huh. A love of being with somebody. Okay. So when I married you, and I'm, I've told you this, I didn't know if we'd make it. I really didn't know love. I just didn't know that. And you know I've told you this. What did I? Yeah, okay. You kind of worded that differently. But that's okay. Go ahead. Um, and and did I think we'd be married 10 years? Did I think we'd be married 33 years? Did you even think about it? No. Yeah. At our age, I mean, when we first got married, we didn't even think about that. So. Or I did. But you did because you're so kind and loving and giving. You taught me love and commitment. You were so hell-bent from my past 
not that I was a bad person or a sleep around guy. I did, but I always told you what I did. Yeah, you were always really brutally honest. Yeah, because which is fine. No, I always it's it makes it easy to trust you. I think there's not yeah. anything you can't do, and, and you, you also had a bad example by your dad. So I knew you were going to go one way or the other. And you made it very clear that that was, and I had a trust problem with another girl, uh-huh. and I was like, this isn't happening. Yeah. And I always told both the kids, number one thing is, has to have trust. If you do not have trust, you will not stay married and your life will be miserable. Okay, so while we're on that, a girl did ask a question. She's 29 years old. What advice do you have for her for finding a soulmate? And that would probably be it. Yes, you have, it ha- you have to have trust in your soulmate. Yeah, or they're not your it's soulmate. It's not even your soulmate. It's who you're going to be married to, spend your life with, or spend time with you you may only be married 10 years and the reason you get divorced is not because you don't trust him but could be something else Uh but let me tell you if you can't trust your partner your life's miserable yeah and in hell and when you say trust it's not even just a lie it is trust in being a consistent person and who they say they are yes it's not like oh i lied and i went and spent some money on a dress (laughs) it's more like I'm, I am who I say I am kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're going to do for the most part. Yeah. And so, but back to the kids. Michael, Michael taught me. My son. Your son. No, your son. My son. Taught me. The, okay. The me, but love for something that I had never felt before in my life. Now, I am 30 years old and it is the joy of joys. Just unbelievable love and happiness, and that's where you come up with. You know, I didn't know if I'd be a good father. I hope I'm a good father. I hope I've been a a, a great father. You've been I hope I continue father. to be a great father. Mm-hmm. But that's what Michael taught me. Uh huh. Alex gave me a heart. Oh, I've oh, that's good. I mean, it's. It was totally different with her. Yeah. Because girls are just, they're, they're more feminine. Um, they just have a different mannerism to them. Yes. So. Starts at an early age. Yes. So if I had never had Alex, I don't think my heart would be where it is today. Oh, I know it wouldn't be where it is today. If I'd had, I think, three boys, I don't, I just don't think they'd give that to you. The heart thing they do to their moms, but not to their dads. I can yeah. see that. Yeah, they always yeah. say they always say God knows when a man needs a girl, because <laughs> yeah. to soften their heart. That's what they say. Actually, your mother told me that. And I t- and I told Michael, and we and we raised Michael, even and he's three years older than Alex. That he always has to be kind to girls, has to be respectful, can never ever be physical with one. Well, that's sort of a given. No, it's not. No, that's yeah. why you have spousal abuse. That's yeah, why. But I don't think that. No, okay. that's a lot more prevalent than we think. Maybe I guess. Okay. You just not been around it. No. But you hear about it. You read about it. Yeah. And it's the saddest thing in the world. It is the saddest thing in the world. One of. So speaking of Alex, when she moved to California, how did you feel about that? I wasn't high on the idea at first, but I'm not going to ever stop my kids from doing what they want to do it's their lives it's not my life yeah and and did you think when she was the age that she is now I mean did you when she was younger did you think this would be a career could you see her in this career that she's no, doing no, no what do no. you think she'd be doing I, no I, I didn't know I thought very much so in some type of a communication role mm-hmm. she is so good at that yes and she is so bubbly and personable and she can light the room up. Yeah. She always has that ability, and people gravitate to her. So some type of PR, yes, but doing – but podcasts weren't really around. No, that's true. Uh, did I see her being a TV news person? No, a reporter? No, she did an internship at Channel 9. She, oh, did, yeah. she did not like it. She didn't like, like it. That's that. right. So, no, I did not see her doing these podcasts. Yeah. Well, she's really good at it. But – at the time, th- they really weren't around, but now I can. Now I see it. Yeah. 
What do you think about like the number of followers Alex has? And have you read any of her hate comments? Like, do you read the comments? No, you know, I don't do, I, I mean, you know, no, I do not. I don't get on Twitter. I do. You set me up on Instagram and there's three, four people I follow. Yes. As I said, so content Kim, Alex, and, um, you don't follow Michael and Graham? Michael and Graham, to my no. no. <laughs> I guess they didn't make the cut. Oh, well, I don't think they do. I don't think Michael does anything. I don't think Graham does much, do you? No, they don't really post much. Okay. No, yeah, you're not missing out. But if you follow Alex and I, you can probably get enough. Well, I have to follow you, too, because that's how I know what you're doing. Yeah, that's how I know what Alex is doing, which is why I like the Instagram thing. That's, how I, that's the only reason I was on it to begin with, was to follow relatives. I mean, I think that's why a lot of people our age get on there. And I like the Instagram. I like, I mean, during the Instagram, you do? Yeah. I like watching you all on Instagram since you're away from me. Yeah. And does I that like, make you feel closer to me? Yeah, because it's a visual. <laughs> it's a visual. Oh, yeah. I feel closer to Al. I mean, when, like, when, when my kids live away, I, Michael doesn't post, but I do, I do like to watch Alex. Like when she's doing this Barstool versus America, I like to see the things that she posts. Yeah. Yeah. It no, does I, make a big I difference. Agree. And visual is a lot better than just voice. Okay, so you've talked a little bit about things I've done. What do you think a dad can do more or different to have an impact on their kids' lives? Well, so working, I kind of had two Joes. There was a work Joe, and then there's a home Joe. Mm -hmm. And home Joe is always to be positive, happy, and be around. When you're around the kids, do what they want to do. Be happy, be energetic, and yes, throw out suggestions and, and be a part of their life. But you've got to motivate them and let them motivate you and do the things they want to do. Just don't do things as a parent that you want to do. Yeah. No. There's probably a lot of that, I guess. I would have never rollerbladed. I had no <laughs> interest in that. So I'm going to say when the kids were little, you played golf. But not, 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 not a lot. Not very much. It but, was work golf. Yeah. And then when they were in high school, you played some. Zero. But, yeah. Almost zero. Because they were doing sports. Yes. And that was like every weekend. So you didn't really play a lot of golf. And I would, I, I traveled a fair amount. Yeah. But I could make my travel schedule to where I, I made everything for them. And I loved that. Yeah. Like Alex has said, I didn't miss a volleyball game. So I think I think um, the thing that you can do more or different is just be completely involved and totally. You involved. may have to give up some of the things that you love the most, like golf or spending time with your guy friends. But you, this, I you totally give that up. We yeah. used to play poker or Monday night in the garage. All that went out the window for about eight years. Fifteen, it seems oh, like fifteen years. Yes. Okay. So was that hard to give up things during those years of high school and middle school doing sports mm, no. with the kids? No. No. I enjoyed it. I wanted to be with, with the kids and you. Yeah. But I enjoy teaching. I love teaching. Well, there's a lot. So every teachable moment, you you seem to always be aware of when it was and the best way to do it. I wasn't that good at that. Like, I when they were younger, I could do that. But you seem to be able to follow and all through high school, even college, and pick those times that were the best to teach them. I, don't, I guess that's because you're really observant of what they're going through. Like you were paying attention to what they were really going through emotionally themselves. Right. But I also was fortunate to be in a role work-wise where I worked with so many people throughout my career and learned from them. I learned from – so I come from a truck driving background, and we had our own company, but – through all the years, I, I got to learn from a lot of other people and, and problems they dealt with. Because you started doing that when you were about eight. Yes. And I worked, uh, so we belonged to a country club. And my seventh and eighth grade year in middle school, I was a dishwasher at a lower country club. A lower country club. Well, ours, the one we belong to, is a little <laughs> nicer a than the than the <laughs> one, the one I worked at. Yeah. And so, you, so you you were members of a club that was a little bit nicer than the one that you worked at. Yeah, and you're not going to. I mean, even at that age, I enjoyed working and I was learning, and I learned to deal with people. 
yeah. in situations. And yeah. I've always enjoyed that. But you're always really honest with people, so I think that that makes a big difference. To be able to say things to people's faces and have a conversation, a lot of people can't do. You did that. You do that with everybody, but you you're really good at doing it with your kids. So, so I am, but there's a fine line on doing that to where you you call people out, and I'll give you a prime example. Just got back from a uh, a golf trip, and we're one of the guys said this guy had a different ball and he hit the different ball and uh oh he's yeah that's <laughs> uh -oh. that's not good so he didn't tell the player that he was doing it okay he was just saying it behind his back yes oh that's so mean here, girl we are, shit. here we are <laughs> at dinner and one of the other guys said okay so you know he hit a different ball but you didn't say nothing <gasps> that that is borderline that is what is that? that? Mean girl shit. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> kind of being a dickhead. Yeah. Okay, so you're so saying. So I don't do that. So I am brutally no, honest. But, but you say it in a kind way. No, you just say it in a way that's private and with that person. And respectful. And respectful, yeah. Yes. But you do that with your kids, too, because a lot of the things that you talked about with the kids, I remember thinking, would be hard to approach. Like, it would be about their feelings or about the whole situation without even saying, you feel this way or you're sad about this. It would be like this is an example of what's going on around you and these are the feelings that you may feel while this is going on around you and it made it easy for them to talk to you about it. Very much so. And I've lived uh, a good life and I've gone through a lot. I've gone through a lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of family trauma. So I, I have... I have great experiences with a multitude of problems, of uh, situations. And let, let me say, if your family's not screwed up to some degree, you really don't have a good family. It, it would be no fun if it was easy sailing. <laughs> I don't I think don't there's any easy sailing family no, out there's there. Not any, there's probably not any. You're right. Or maybe you could just say they're boring. Or maybe they just aren't telling anyone the truth. I and, don't I've, know. and I probably had more than my fair share. I think I okay. did. No, I, uh, no, I've had a lot more <laughs> than you. So you always notice the, the opportune time to talk to people, and you can remember what to say. Like you come up with it in the moment. This makes me think of my boomer move of the week. Um, Graham and I went to the comedy cellar. Why, and Alex is out of town, so it was just Graham and I. We were in the front row, literally at the feet of the comedian that's up there, and he asks what my what I do, and I couldn't even answer him. I just went blank, like I could have said, I work had at to say something. I know. I, all, I, all I could muster out of my mouth was content. <laughs> no. Yes. So I could have plugged the podcast. I could have done, I could have said Barstool Sports. I could have said anything. So later on, he DM'd me, and he said, why didn't you plug your podcast? And I was like, just a... Dumbass boomer move, I think. <laughs> Kim. I know, that's not good, is it? How has uh, spending time with Graham while Alex has gone been? It's been? I know you had a great weekend because even I enjoyed those pictures at the Botanical Garden. Yeah, weren't they pretty? They are awesome. Yeah, I was, I, I, I was a little, I didn't think the Orchid Show was as great as I thought it was going to be. Because when you've been to Vegas and you've been to the Bellagio or you've been to the Wynn, you see a lot of that. But the grounds were incredible. But I was thinking about it later on in the day, and I was like, Graham was a huge trooper to go to the botanical garden with me and to the comedy cellar and to dinner. Like, that was a lot. <laughs> so he gets big kudos. I've had a great time. Yeah. That's I've been trying to get Alex to go to the botanical garden. Good son -in -law. For about, I do have a good son-in-law. I've been trying to get Alex to go to the botanical garden for about three months. Where is the botanical garden? It's about, it's like a 40-minute drive. Where is it? In the Bronx? Wow. Yeah. I did not know. It was a perfect day. And it I don't know how many acres it's on, but it's beautiful. I wish we had that in Oklahoma City. Oh, and I actually okay. want to go. You do? Yeah. So speaking of Oklahoma City. Oh, we have a botanical garden ourselves. We do. In the city. <laughs> so you always want to compare Oklahoma City to New York City and I call do. it the Little Apple. I do. Quick intermission for Manscaped. Best in below the waist grooming for men. I know my husband has the Lawnmower 4.0, and your husband should have it too. 
Manscaped recently launched an ultimate hygiene package. It's called their Performance Package. This is a great gift for the man in your life or for Father's Day. Think ahead. Help join over 4 million men worldwide who trusted Manscaped with this exclusive offer. You get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with code SAIDSO at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that is 8 million shaved balls. Is that right, Joe? He says that's right. There we go. The Performance Package 4.0 includes the Lawnmower 4.0, which my husband Joe has, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Trimmer, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Toner. I think I'll give that as a gift. And the Performance Boxer Briefs, all in a travel bag to hold your goodies. So go to manscaped.com and use promo code said so for 20% off last week Alex and I talked about the what you compare and I, I said a few of the things but can you give us a list or just a quick rundown of what your 10 things were okay um NYC OKC the Empire State Building the National the East River the Oklahoma River New York always wants a World Series Oklahoma City has one every year the softball World Series have subway we have above ground subway well we have, have above ground. awesome Go ahead. Uh, museums up here we have a couple of awesome museums in oklahoma city um the parks we have a big park now scissor tail park yeah scissor tail park central, park central park we both have botanical gardens yes a little bit different but they're there they're there um, the bombing yes the, the memorial that, i know of well, the memorial is got, beautiful in Oklahoma got City. DM'd about that. We're the only two cities with memorials and national um, terrorist attacks. Yes, but there's actually uh, museums for the terrorists for the bombings. Yeah. I think that's about all of them. Okay, so that that's all we can think of. But anyway, I do see all your. I see your point. It's just kind of hard to. It, I see your point, and I think it's a great point. I think everyone should love the city that they're from. Yes. Yeah. Sorry if you hear a drill in the background because uh, it's not going to stop anytime soon. Um, the last thing I wanted to ask you, Joe, was did you see the interview with Bill Murray on CNBC when he was with Becky Quick after he'd been to the um, – Berkshire Hathaway meeting? Yes. Yes, I did. Were you – so I don't know if anybody knows, but I guess he's been on a m movie – that they stopped production of because of something that he had said to a girl that he works with. Well, you really don't know if he said or he physically did. Yeah, did. we don't know what he did. But So they stopped it, and now they're doing some investigating in it. But his take on it, which he talked about, was he thought he was being humorous. He thought it was funny. And if this is somebody that he works with and he respects and he really likes, and she was offended, and so he's had a couple of weeks to think about it. Did you... I thought what he said was um, how he's handling it was key to how people our age, boomers, have to learn to kind of step into how things have changed in the landscape in the past, like, two or three years or five years, really. Very much so. Like the way that we say things. So he said, it doesn't really matter how it affects me. It matters how the other person feels, how I made the other person feel, not, like, defending myself that I didn't mean to hurt anyone's feelings but we need to resolve how I made that person feel. Right. And that I need to learn. And I thought that was really, really good. And he said, a puppy's never too old to learn. Yeah, he didn't want to be that, that old that puppy. old puppy that doesn't learn. Yeah. So we got, we got to learn the new ways and the nice ways. I got called out for saying, a com, uh, putting a picture on my Instagram story. It was a picture of a mannequin in a really tight-fitting leotard. And I said, whoever can wear this, you should be wearing this now. And the comments were, everyone can wear that. So when I was younger, it was like, you got to be skinny and you got to look good in something to wear it. In my eyes, I had everyone, you know, like you had to look good to wear it. But it's not that way. People can wear anything they want. If they feel good in it and they have the self-confidence to do it, they can wear it. So it's, it's kind of that rote learning when you're yes. growing up. You learn yes. it. But then as you get older, you go, that's really not okay. I didn't really think about how that person may feel or what I just said make, might make someone feel. Correct. Okay. Well, Joe, thank you for being on. It's been a lot of fun. It has. Thank you for having me on. And this is much harder than I thought. It is? Yes. Yeah? Yes. What's hard about it? You, I'm sure after in an hour or two, I'll think, oh, my God, I wish I would answered this a little different. But 
it's on the spot. Uh-huh. It's recordable, so it will be out there forever. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you kind of really want your thoughts to come across really the way you want them to come across. It's not easy to communicate and throw out there really exactly what you're thinking all the time when somebody asks you a question. I mean. Because you can't just talk through it like a normal conversation and have it come out right. Right? Like, if I'm talking to you, I can go in circles and get to an end. We have a long time, but if you're just if you're getting a, answering a question on here that's quick, you kind of go, "I want to get everything in." That's hard. Very much so. Yeah. I, Bill Murray did a great job, but he's had a couple of weeks to think about it. And I, but they did say this is his first on air, no, his first interview since his problem uh, came about. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, he also said that he really likes this person and that he is actually working and talking with just her, which I thought was good, too. Very good. Yeah. Yes. And it's very good on her part to be um, talking with him and not shutting him off and just saying, no, no. Yeah, that's true. I, I want no part of you. So they're both, I have, they're both class acts. And that's where everybody needs to be. It does no good to shut one out. Sometimes people... I do that sometimes, yeah. Slip, and that's not ex exactly how you mean it. Just like a girl told me to wait 40 years. I really don't know how she meant it, but I am <laughs> not happy with her <laughs> at all. Well, also, don't take anything personally, right? She was just messing with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't, you can like, comment, and subscribe on Because I Said So, and also leave a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. This Sunday, we have a special Mother's Day gift. It is an interview with Isaiah Thomas. So that is our Mother's Day gift to you, and I hope to see you then. Happy Mother's Day. See you later.